Number one implant in Asia. You they make textured implants. The problem is, is that there's some problems with ALCL, like some rare type of blood cancer lymphoma. So textured implants really are out. What is the surface? Why does it matter? How is it different? The problem is that with smooth implants, there's a slightly increased risk of too much scar tissue formation around the implant. The beauty scientists, Dr. Christy Hamilton and Dr. Roy Kim. Real beauty without the hype. Welcome to the Beauty Scientist. I'm Dr. Christy Hamilton here with my fellow board certified plastic surgeon, Dr. Roy Kim. We are the Beauty Scientist and we are talking about six generation breast implants today that in the last few days have hit the US market. So we're, we're very excited. What is this implant, Dr. Kim? These are Motiva breast implants. They're made by Establishment Labs. So Establishment Labs is a company in Costa Rica and they started making implants some time ago. They've grown into a massive company. They're publicly traded on NASDAQ. The background story is that the brother and the father of the CEO are plastic surgeons. The CEO is not a doctor, but grew up with a bunch of plastic surgeons. And they were very interested in breast implants. And over time, they became a reseller of breast implants, and then they decided to make them on their own. So they've been selling them like great, I think, eight or 10 years, maybe longer outside of the U.S., and as mm -hmm. we both know, they just got FDA approved uh, about a week ago. Yeah, I actually, incidentally, I think it's, you know, the, the flights to Costa Rica, Houston's the hub. So actually on the on the way back from our American Society of Plastic Students meeting, I was on the plane with the CEO and then my rep was on the plane. So she was like, oh, that's, he's here. So I had a chance to meet him and his son and just, they're just so passionate about technology. And you can really see that they sat down he obviously listened to his brother and his dad, like tried to understand like what are the things we're trying to improve on? Like what would make the patient experience better? And then they sat down and took the time to make this implant. And that's why you and I were discussing this and you were telling me about it years ago. It's multifactorial, the new tech that's come out with the implant. And that's why we were like, we got to do a whole episode on this alone because um, it's exciting. And they said it's been out for 14 years in various markets. Number one implant in Asia, you told me that. And then very popular in South America. So my colleague in my office, Dr. Franco, she's like, oh yeah, Motiva, it's like the luxury implant. It's the lifestyle implant. Um, and there's a couple of different reasons why that is. But we'd like to talk about the surface the gel itself and then the way that the gel melts with the shell, um, the shape, the placement, and then even RFID technologies. There's so much to cover that makes these implants new. It's not just one feature. So let's start with the surface. What is the surface? Why does it matter? How is it different? Yeah, the background is that we want smooth implants because they make textured implants. The problem is, is that there's some problems with ALCL, like some rare type of blood cancer lymphoma. So textured implants really are out. We like the smooth implants because they don't seem to have any of those issues. The problem is that with smooth implants, there's a slightly increased risk of too much scar tissue formation around the implant. To make the smooth implant a little different, a little better, they actually have what you and I felt, slight micro velvety texture. And smooth implants are supposed to, according to biophysics, and this is not a commercial, this is actually what I know and learn from Motiva and other companies, it has like a one micron or less sort of peaks and valleys. And to the naked finger, it's pretty smooth. Motiva has four microns. So this is why we feel it's sort of very minimally velvety, but technically, according to biophysics, it's a smooth implant, which is very critical. And so what that allows, though, is that it actually has less capsule contracture than other types of smooth implants, which is pretty impressive. And just as a reference, textured implants, which exist today, they're 90 to 100 microns in terms of peaks and valleys. And like, yes, to the naked finger, just feeling it without a microscope or anything, you can definitely feel it. So we're getting the best of both worlds right there. We're getting the no concern about that type of blood cancer, which caused all of us to abandon the textured implants, which were great at decreasing scar tissue formation. And then it's also addressed the capsular contracture, which is that thick and scar that can form around some implants. And so they report because of this, that their capsular contracture rate is less than 1%. I mean, that's, that's very favorable, very impressive. And that's, that's new. So it was like 
first problem, like almost solved. And they do feel really nice. And, and then we'll get into shapes afterwards, but that's exciting. So number one, surface structure. And then number two, the way that they manufacture the device is completely different. So, so the implants that we currently have, they have the silicone shell and then they fill it with a now form stable gel. So meaning it's not liquid, it's cohesive. And then they put a patch on it so that everything doesn't separate. This is, they call it true monoblock technology. Can you describe Dr. Kim, like what, what that is, like why it's different? And I think why it's, it matters? it's not like a separate patch that's sealed over a tiny hole on the back of the implant. Rather, they're able to make it so that it is literally one full, fairly complete shell. Now, it can't be totally complete because they have to put, put filler in it, but it is much more complete, and that's why they call it monoblock. And the clinical significance of what I was learning about was that because you can you can squeeze and push and pull this implant because it is like one piece, one block, that you know we're used to um, putting dropping uh, implant sterilely into a funnel and then using that to squeeze the implant through a small incision. Well, this apparently they you know you don't want to say it, like can't be ruptured, but it's got a less than one percent rupture rate too. So apparently you can like squeeze it through something even smaller, so you can make an even smaller incision in the patient. And then of course, anytime you don't have to worry about rupture, that's like great in terms of the longevity of the implants. Um, and patients not having to worry that they're walking around with a broken device in their body. So that's really exciting. Um, and then of course, I think one of the things that really impressed me when I was holding it is this new ergonomics gel. So what, what is different about the, the actual silicone gel itself? I think, you know, we're getting now into sort of the shape as well as the gel. Isn't that the difference between like round versus ergonomics? Mm hmm Yeah. And so round implants obviously around. The teardrop shape implants, we don't use a lot of them because it has to be a textured shell. In other words, if it's thinner at the top, thicker at the bottom, teardrop shape or anatomic shape, hey, it should look more natural. The problem is they can rotate. So how do we stop the rotation? We're going to invent or create a more textured shell. Well, as we just mentioned, mm -hmm. the existing texture shell implants really have a fairly rough surface fantastic for reducing capsule contracture, very good at preventing rotation, but had some issues with blood cancer slash other things. So with the ergonomics, it's textured enough to not rotate. It feels great. The fill is great, but it is a true anatomic or teardrop shape implant without rotation. Yes. And what's so great about it is when you're holding it in your hand, it is round. It's, it's a round implant. And then when you tilt it, like it might be in your body, you know, so if you're laying flat, like a woman, like what happens to your breasts? They kind of flatten out, they become rounder. Then when you stand up, your breast drops into a natural teardrop. Well, that's what these implants do. So they really, like, I was so impressed that I was trying to video it and show it on camera. And it's like, it's really like a feel thing. Like you could see it, but you really have to feel it. You can feel as you move the implant around that the center of gravity of it is shifting as that gel shifts in real time. And it's not like liquid shifting. It is a cohesive implant. So they've just made it so that it really can morph and meld with your body so that you can lie on your stomach, you can lie on your side, you can lie flat. And then it's not like these round circles that move around with you, which they still have an implant that does that look if that's what you want. But that technology, like, that's truly like makes it sixth generation in my mind. I think that's just really, really neat. And so then it still comes in all the same different profiles, like where if you want more volume and a more augmented look, you can still have that. But this is for the patients that really want something that truly mimics natural breast tissue. And they still have the more traditional round. If you like that more like cleavage-y, like upper pole fullness round look, which is still very pretty and still what a lot of patients may want. And so they have one with that too, that still has all these other technological features as well. Tell me more about the RFID, cause that's just, that's neat. Yes. So there's a little RFID chip that is optional in Motiva breast implants. So what's interesting is that Right now, even though we have serial numbers associated with all breast implants, 
They're not really stamped on the implant and there's really no way to track it. In other words, it's up to the surgeon, the operating room to make sure that the serial numbers are documented in the patient chart and the operative report and everything else. With an RFID chip, obviously, like you can have a completely unique serial number that, hey, you can get that scanned and we know where the implants from slash when it was placed slash when it was made and all that those details, which are very important for patients. What's interesting is that I spoke to the, some of the reps and some of the management. Uh, it depends on the country if it's popular or not. In certain countries, it's extremely popular because it shows that you have an authentic Motiva implant and it's not counterfeit. Mm, and that could be a concern in certain countries more so than like, you know, if you're going to a board certified plastic surgeon in the United States, you're, you're getting the real deal. Like, there's no question about that. Um, and I know they were saying for the U.S. market, they're a little unsure if that's going to take off because they were like, Americans don't like to be chipped. <laughs> and I was like, well, this is not a tracking device, but um, yes, we'll see. Because they were also talking about how like like a future direction they have is like this, you know, so you have this like RFID chip just so that you know like what it is. And that's really important. If you lose all your information, you can't get in contact with your plastic surgeon. There's still a way to find out what's in your body and not just like surprise going in there and and having to take it out to know. But then they also talked about, you know, like kind of like how we have the Aura rings or the Fitbits and the Apple Watches that are kind of monitoring our like different components like of our physiology, our heart rate, blood pressure, like the your heart rhythm. They're like, there's like room for like integration with the implant and like actual tech that can, you know, could connect with your smartphone. So instead of having to wear some, a ring or a watch, you could actually have something that's like, if you're going to choose to have implants, like it's already doing that for you and then connecting with your, with your uh, smartphone and device. And I was like, that's like really neat in the sense that you don't actually have to wear some accessories. Now I know some people that's, that may freak them out, that level of uh, intimate knowledge of what's going on with you, but um, and it's, they're certainly not making that mandatory, but I was like, that's a, that's an interesting like future direction if you're choosing to have breast implants. Yeah. I mean, it would be wild to have an iOS or Android app that's monitoring your implants and you could watch it on your phone or Apple watch, but I guess it's possible. Yeah. Um, and then they had also technology for like assuring the integrity of the implant. So of course, like they're going to leave the, the manufacturing facility knowing that they're okay, but then shipping, whatnot. So they have this blue seal technology so that if there is a flaw, when you open the implant, you would see that flaw illuminated in blue, not with light, but like the way if, if the gel were to fracture, or there was an issue with it, you would see that in like a blue line in the implant. So it's like a good way for surgeons to verify it before placing them to know that those implants are intact. Um, and then I think one of the most exciting things is this kind of merging of the technology with the preservation breast augmentation concept. Can you describe that for our listeners? I think this goes along with the bigger trend in breast implant surgery of placing it not under the muscle, but technically above the muscle under the fascia. So that's increasing the more popular and favorable position because you have less movement when you flex your pec. The dissection is a little less painful, so patients recover faster. It's a safe area to help avoid bacterial contamination, capsule contracture, where too much scar tissue forms. And yeah, I think that, you know, Motiva is very well at the forefront of that, especially with their smooth shell. And yes. Yeah. And that morphing gel. So you can think about it, but if you know it's going to drop into this natural teardrop, well, the issue for some, you know, a lot of patients seeking breast augmentation don't have very much breast tissue. Like that's the reason that they're there. And so if you place some of those implants in front of the muscle with the implants we currently have, it might look a little too obvious. Like you'd see the edges yeah. of the implant and then maybe you're considering having to fat graft or do some other um, procedures to camouflage that. So a lot of times we go under the muscle for those patients. But now if they're choosing to have like a, if they're very thin and want like a, natural look they could now i think we've opened up that door to more patients to be able to choose in front of the muscle if that speaks to their lifestyle because we have an implant that's designed to be there even in thin individuals so that's neat and new yeah and it'll be interesting to see how this plays out because a lot of plastic surgeons but i still think as a minority are now placing it under the fascia as opposed to under the muscle 
But yeah, with Motiva exactly. implants, I mean, it definitely is far superior under the fascia because it's such a natural look, natural movement, natural feel. Yeah, and things, anything that kind of puts like, the implant then goes where the breast tissue actually is. So the concept like absolutely resonates. We just have to remember there was a reason we went to enter the muscle in the first place and make sure if we're moving back to in front that we're doing so safely um, and in a way that's sustainable. So maybe including internal bras or meshes or other technologies to make that work for patients. That's It's cool that we're kind of getting to integrate all these different concepts to create a result that um, just affords patients more options. And I think that's always great. Tell me about the Mia Femtech. This is like so interesting. This is me. interesting because this goes slightly against what we've just talked about because Mia Femtech, what they're saying, the company's saying, is that you're injecting a breast implant through the underarm. And they really want it to be done under local anesthesia, even in a med spa or office setting, not necessarily in an operating room. So as plastic surgeons, we all know that what they're talking about is a transaxillary approach, an underarm incision. You create a rectangular, you know, dissected pocket or hallway, and then you still use special instrumentation to create a circular pocket for the implant. And then they have special disposable single use instruments for that. And then you are limited to like sort of how big the implants are, but you still, once you're happy with the pocket, you're happy with the pocket and where it is, you then place through essentially a funnel, the actual Motiva implant. You inject it, if you will. And what's interesting is that from my sources, it's really above, like underneath the breast tissue, but above the fascia, above the muscle. In other words, it's mm. subglandular. So they really want that to take off as a concept because Motiva views itself not as a breast implant company. They view themselves really as a pro-female, pro-women company. And they have other things hidden up their sleeve in the pipeline, ready to make that happen. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. I'm not so sure about that. You know, as a plastic surgeon, of course, I like, I was like, we can't be doing breast augmentation in the med spa, but I guess they'll, we'll see. I mean, if they, if they revolutionize that and, and make it reproducible, I just feel like you've got to be prepared for what if they went in the wrong place? What do you do if you actually like go too deep? So, but we'll see. I mean, we're entering this era of AI and then ultimately robotics and things like that. So it's these concepts, which seem maybe like impossible right now, we'll see technology is evolving quickly. So I think we're, I think we've got job security for the next little while, Roy, but who knows yeah. what it's going to look like in, in 20 years. Who knows? Yeah, maybe we have job security for another year or two. Yeah, <laughs> it's happening quickly. It's pretty amazing. And then how do you feel about, so you talked about the, the kind of the, how the company envisions itself, which is more like femtech and pro, pro woman or like woman, like a lifestyle luxury brand, like technologies that will enhance a woman's life, which I think is really neat. And how do you feel about the, like the company at large? Like, would you invest in it? Yes. Yeah, so as of right now, I don't have an investment in them. I was waiting for the FDA approval, but yes, I'm very gung-ho on the company. They have a great product. They, you know, quote is that they have 3.4 million implants that they've actually produced that are in humans. They are by far the market leader in terms of business to consumer awareness. I mean, I don't know about you, but most patients do not ask me for a specific breast implant, um, a breast implant company. They just they're not aware of it. Consumers around the world are very aware of Motiva. I mean, my friends in Europe and South America and Asia, everywhere, Middle East, they tell me patients come in and a decent chunk of them want to have Motiva breast implants only. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's powerful, right? Because in my experience, like patients do not come in asking for a specific brand. Maybe now they will start doing so, but they, they come in for breast implants and they very much want to know what my opinion is. And I think one may like suit their body better, but they're really like relying on me to guide them through that process. So that bodes very well for their company and their brand and the reputation that they built for themselves. So that's wonderful news. I placed my first order today is so two days ago. So I am I'm excited. I've got a case coming up in a couple of weeks. Oh wow, you're lucky. They won't let me take any orders yet. So they must like you more than they like me. I don't know. Well, I mean I haven't received them yet, <laughs> so we'll know. <laughs> They're just writing down what I want, but we'll see. Well, I guess when I have the implants in hand, then we'll know, but um, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, to be honest, they don't have a rep for me yet. Okay, yeah, so I so I have a rep. 
So that, that probably helps, but it seems like they're just like trying to build this, this distribution plane while they're flying it. Cause everyone's so excited. Well, they literally just got approval about a week ago. They actually are still hiring for the national sales force. So just in case somebody out there is listening, yeah, you can apply to Motiva slash establishment labs for sales rep job. And that I feel like it's going to be a good job. Just, a, just a feeling. Yeah, I also don't have stock in the company for the record. So I'm just excited about the technology. Yeah, yeah. I think you can sort of tell between Dr. Hamilton and myself talking that technology is real. It's a real company. It has good financial backing. So whatever warranties, like the details of the warranty behind it, it means something. And, yeah. yeah. My final thought on that too, I thought it was very impressive that, um, so for the, for the science people, you'll know Nature Magazine, which is a scientific journal. And it's like, that is like one of the absolute like top, top, top journals you could ever publish anything in, in science. And so that is really, really impressive for them to publish their technological advances about the surface and like how they came up with this, how it's like low, I like a, it's like a hypo inflammatory surface to really trying to find the most biocompatible technology. I mean, that is really, really difficult to get, um, anything published in that journal, uh, let alone something about breast implants. So like they, totally, like they really put the work in to make something that's better. I totally agree. FDA approval is hard. Well, you know what? That article is harder. That that article is harder. Yeah, that's true. I agree. So my brother has a PhD. And so like, I know like, like getting, getting something published in one of those, uh, a journal of that caliber is like, that's like, that could be like the, you know, the pinnacle of someone's career. So That's right. um, it's very impressive. Well, I think that about wraps it up. I mean, we definitely, as you can tell, both you and I are very curious about this company. We spent a lot of time at their booth at the ASPS meeting. We've done a lot of research online. And since it looks like you're going to get your hands on them sooner than me, I'm very curious to see, you know, how, how they go in, how the surgical process is and how your patient does. Very excited. I will keep you updated. We'll do a follow-up episode. That sounds great. So as always, thanks so much for joining. If you have any comments, leave them below. If you have any questions or even future topics you want us to discuss, let us know. And finally, Dr. Hamilton, stay beautiful. Stay beautiful. Thank you for joining us on The Beauty Scientist. Be sure to visit thebeautyscientist.com and learn more about modern beauty and connect with Dr. Hamilton and Dr. Kim.